FXP, so look, we've got the soldering iron on the go. Little holder thing there. And we've got another OLED screen. And this time it's going on a dual hat, which I've had for ages. Oh, it's broken now. Dual hat. There's the pins that's gonna hold the hat. So we got the pins it's all that way around. We're gonna tack some solder on this side, hold it in place, and then turn it over and do some more. Okay, we've got some flux. Just gonna dab a bit on there. Way too much, but oh well. So, we've uh, tried to tin the iron. Got a little blob of solder here. No one's allowed to criticise my soldering. I know I can't solder. We'll try and get a blob on the iron. Now, see that little blob? Just gonna drop it into one of these holes. Not the, I've got a couple of soldering irons, but this is probably not the best one. All right, well that's in there. Yes. Let's get the next one. So, yeah, well, it's in place. So, another little blob. Right, it's too big, that blob. Let's do the end one. Okay, that one sort of worked. Okay, not great, but it's on there. So turn it over and then we'll get this screen on. Like so. I just prop something underneath the screen because I don't really want it touching. So what should I put? Should we put the antenna? No, it's a bit thin. Let's just fold a bit of paper let's put it under here right so we'll get some flux on there get the iron tin the iron see if you can see it tin it a bit Oh, well, at least we know it's hot, and then we'll just touch it on there, and then just dab a bit in. That's one done. My eyesight's a bit rubbish, to be honest. I can't hardly see what I'm doing. I've got glasses on, but it's still rubbish. The test would be when we try and boot the thing. Okay, right, so back in its little holder. I use a sponge here, and then where's my, yeah, the flux, right. Sorry, woggling around. 
So, take the paper out. Let's have a real good look. Not the clearest picture, is it? I've got too many light sources here. Right, so obviously I can snip those pins. Like so. You can see there are markings. Turn it over. It's on there, isn't it? Right, next thing is to connect it to Pi Star, and then I'll video putting the settings in and see if it goes, it turns on the OLED screen. Right, well here we are. I've got myself a Raspberry Pi 3B. I always keep a spare one of these because I know there's always a project around the corner I want to do. And you can get them for 20 quid, you know? And they've got built-in Wi-Fi. They've got an Ethernet, they're just good. Now this, this dual band Pi Star MMDVM board, these, I think they're like also like 20 quid on eBay. Uh, I've never really used one before, but I have actually set this one up fully working so that what, the main thing about a dual hat, I mean, they're a bit faffy if you ask me, I don't tend to use them, but you can monitor two, say for example, two slots at the same time on DMR, on DMR, so let's just say you're listening on, I don't know, Talk Group 91, slot 1, and you want to um, disconnect, you can go to slot 9 and disconnect yourself. Uh, but it's not just that, you can actually receive two, two, two talk groups at the same time, as, lo as long as they're on different slots. So if you're listening to, say, Talk Group... 91 and talk group say 2350 on a different slot you're here you actually get them both simultaneously I've, I've got a video to prove this um so um thing is i haven't configured this this sd card i haven't actually configured it for that at the moment it's configured for a single um a single dmr mmdvm board but it will still fire up so what we do Get our Pi 3B. If you if if it's a blank SD card, you're going to have to go to the Pi Star system, upload the image on here using Bellina Etcher or Windows Disk 32, then add your WPA file, which is basically your router username and password. Um, in just dropping it in there to make this thing fire up. You know, so it's not hard, but obviously if you don't know, you don't know. You've got to learn, like anything. So, let's get this on here. Um, just give myself a bit of distance. So, right, obviously line the pins up. You know, the amount of times I've lined this up wrong before, and then I've, I've said to myself, don't connect the power until you, whilst you're doing it don't and i have connected the power stupidly but luckily i've never broke anything so hey, there you are obviously i've got two antennas so next thing we're all on there really you should put like a spacer in this gap stop it dropping down like that right anyway but we're all in there next thing is to uh... right found a power supply I'll plug it in live. If it all goes wrong, blame me. Right. Nothing's happening. I just want to plug that in. No power to that. Um, what have I done wrong? Let's check the late cables in properly. Yeah, just, there you go. Right, just pushed it in a bit more. So, what we're going to be looking for is we're going to, once it's booted, give it a minute to boot. We're going to be looking for a 
don't think the OLED will work yet. It might do because I've actually configured the SD card for an OLED screen already. So it should just, yeah, it should, it should just suddenly see D star appear. Now Raspberry Pis, they boot up a lot quicker. Pi 3Bs, they boot up a lot quicker than a Pi Zero. So it should boot quick. Here's an antenna. Now these, these come with antennas. There, do you see it flash then? It looks like it's going to boot. There you go. Right. Well, I actually thought that the one I ordered was yellow and blue. That's a bit naughty. It's good enough, but that's not the one I ordered. Right, so. Okay. As you can see, fully working, and you actually... I've got the radio here. So we can even do a quick transmission. So let's give a call. Mike Zero, Fox X3 Bravo, calling on one Charlie. There you go. My call sign came up, IP address, everything. So basically it's fully working. So we have success, just disappointment that it's not yellow and blue, which is what I ordered. 7-3, all the best.